Good evening everyone, Spartan Alpha Zulu here, bringing you another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle and another Pokemon breakdown. Finally, the combo breakdown. I finally managed to freaking get it together. And so this is the combo that I use. Uh, you can find the set on the Smogon website. EV spread, 252 attack, 252 speed with 4 in special defense and a jolly nature. The move set... Substitute, Belly Drum, Thunder Punch, and Drain Punch. And the moveset gives it fairly decent coverage in the OU meta. Um, it can hit almost everything for you know pretty much neutral damage. Um, the stats, 260 HP, 319 attack, 286 defense, 212 uh, special attack, 247 special defense with a speed of 295. And the item that this Pokemon is holding is the Salak Berry. And what that does is when this Pokemon's health gets low... It eats the berry, increasing its speed by one stage. And even with the 295 speed after eating a Salak Berry, it does still get outsped by a lot of Pokemon. So you got to be careful when using this set. Um, it's very good on hyper offensive teams. It's very good with a Pokemon that has, you know, that provides screens. Um, it's very good with uh, Tapu Koko, Halucha. Uh, they complement it very well and just a uh, another issue i've been having if you've if you've got this set down to the t please tell me what your evie and ivy spread is in the comments because i'm having issues with it uh the big issue i'm having is getting the silic berry to be eaten after a substitute and a belly drum uh, i've maybe only gotten it to go off once or twice and that's because stealth rock damage happened or he took a hit that just didn't do too much damage so if you do have you know the right amount of EV spread. Oh, and I also have no EVs and IVs in his HP. So even then, I'm still having issues with it. So if you have the set down, please just help me out and let me know what you got. But it is still a fun Pokemon. I like the last video with the battle with FMF. It had Combo Sweep in his team. So it is still a good Pokemon to, to use. So starting with the first Wi-Fi battle, a rematch against Ravi. And if you look at his team and my team, you see I've got my Excadrill Suicide lead. You see, you see he's got Mega Metasham. So that alone tells me that I don't want to start off with Excadrill. And I'll get more uh, more in-depth with that. But let's get ready to rock and roll and let's see how this plays out. So sure enough, he leads with that Mega Metasham. I'm going to go ahead and lead with Landorus. And the reason I didn't go with Excadrill is because when you got Pokemon like Me Mega, Meta Mega Metacham, like Megalopony, you don't want to lead with your suicide lead, especially if it's holding a sash. And the reason is because they're going to fake out turn one, netting them the free uh, the free turn. Unless you got something like a Pokemon with Shield Dust or a Pokemon with uh, Inner Focus that's not, you know, where they're not going to flinch, you don't want to lead with your suicide lead. So I went ahead and went with Landorus. Going ahead, going to go ahead and get the U-turn off, dealing a very good amount of damage to that Mega Meta Champ. He did not go for the fake out. So he probably just thought I was going to do an Earthquake or a Stone uh, Stealth Rock. And uh, because he ended up going with the Ice Punch. But after the U-turn, I kind of see Ice Punch coming. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in Tapu Fini because Tapu Fini is not going to take a lot of damage from an Ice Punch. So that was a very good prediction on my part. He probably thought I had a defensive Lando and that I was just going to set up my entry hazards. But, I mean, as you guys know, I don't like setting up my entry hazards first turn. I love anti-leads. They're my favorite type of leads. So now he's going to go ahead and bring in his Tapu Koko, bring in Mega Metacham out. So I kind of had a feeling he was going to switch here because I did not see Mega Metacham doing anything to Tapu Fini. So I'm going to switch myself, going back into Landorus, which is a good thing I did because he brought in Tapu Koko. And now I'm kind of still, I, I kind of got the upper hand again here because, I mean, Tapu Koko can't really do much to a Landorus, especially since, you know, mine's Choice Scarf. I knew he was going to switch out again because he knows my Landers is Choice Scarf. He doesn't want to lose Tapu Koko this early in the game. Oh, damn, he used U-Turn! And I'm going to get some Pivot Tempo on his own Landers, But he has a bulky defensive Landers, and I'm going to take some Rocky Helmet damage there. So I don't want to do too much physical attacks to this Landers. I'm going to go ahead and bring in my Superior, and I'm just going to see if I can Leaf Storm this thing down and get my uh get my special attack boost and just kind of wear it out slowly i knew it wasn't going to oko if it got a critical hit actually it might have so that would have been cool but i do not get the critical hit and i put it in the orange u-turn putting my superior in the orange doing a very good amount of damage below 50 percent but leftovers is gonna kind of put me back up there and now he's going to bring in his latios so this should have been a pretty freaking big clue for me that this latios was choice scarf but i still wasn't sure 
because I was thinking maybe he doesn't, you know, he doesn't have the speed stats down. But he switched out, realizing that I was faster, and I was going to go with the Dragon Pulse. So if he if he was switching out to kind of throw me off my prediction game, he did a very good job at it. Because as it turns out, that Latios is definitely choice scarfed. U turn from Tabu Coco, not taking out Superior, but putting it in the red, and he's going to go ahead and bring in his Latios again, but it's going to take a plus Leaf Storm, which it doesn't take it out, but it does do a very significant amount of damage for Latios, you know, resisting it because of its dragon typing. So I put it below 50%, and, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and go for broke here because I'm not, at this point in the game, I'm not sure if this thing is Scarf, but I should have suspected something because he put it in for a reason. So I should have just gone right back into Tabu Fini because I would have taken the Ice Beam and... I would have put my terrain back up and the terrain would have helped me out so much because it, it uh, lowers dragon type attack. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring in Tabukini against his Latios and again I mess up here uh, I mess up here once again because I should have known he was going to switch. You know it's Choice Scarf. He's stuck in an Ice Beam. He's not going to be able to do anything to Tabukini and he's not going to want to lose Latios. So I went for the Moon Blast instead of switching. And I kind of mess up because Moonblast has a chance to lower special attack. Or if you hit a contrary superior, it'll raise it. So now I kind of helped him out and I'm in a tight spot. Um, I could switch, but I got a feeling the superior is pack and substitute. So I'm going to keep Tabufini in. If I lose Tabufini, I lose Tabufini. Luckily enough, my prediction panned out. And it is a substitute superior. So I did not go for the switch. I went ahead and went for the Moonblast to take uh, take out the substitute not allowing him to get some extra protection there on superior because substitute superior is an annoying pokemon and it can sweep if you're not careful with it so that was a big risk that i took but i said screw it just keep it in see what happens and it paid off he's going to go for the leaf storm after a special attack buff thanks to my moon blast and it does not take tapu fini out living with 12 health to get moon blasted to the face and now his special attack is even higher because of the contrary buff. Sadly, Moonblast does not take out Superior. And he's going to live in the red with Leftovers putting him back up. So now I, I kind of got to let Tabu Fini get taken out here, which sucks. Because I want the terrain for that Latios. Leaf Storm, but no! Tabu Fini practicing those 5 Ds of Dodgeball to Moonblast Superior in the face. And taking it out of the match. That was awesome. That I mean, that's... That was just awesome. What that was was just a very big lucky break. Now he's going to bring his Mega Metacham back out against my Tapu Fini. Because my health is so low, Fake Out will probably do the job here. And sadly enough, Fake Out taking my Tapu Fini out of the match. So I lose my terrain and I lose one of my one of my walls. So I got to worry. Uh, you know, I, gotta, I don't really have anything for that Latios. And uh, I'm just going to have to play around it. I'm going to go ahead and bring Landorus back in against his Mega Metacham. He's going to go ahead and switch, bringing his own Landorus back in so that when I U-turn, I'm just going to get, you know, the residual damage from Rocky Helmet slowly wearing down my Landorus. But, I mean, uh, that was a good move on his part. U-turn not doing anything to the bulky Lando. <clears throat> but I got to pivot tempo going here. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in my Thunderous Thryon. And I love this Pokemon. He is just freaking awesome. I'm not going to go for the agility because I don't want to get exploded or stone edge. I'm going to go ahead and just take it out with the Hidden Power Ice. Although I think he might have been just setting up his Stealth Rocks. Or maybe he would have gone for the U-Turn. I'm actually not quite sure. But I should have gone with the agility. Because had I gone with the agility, I would have outsped pretty much everything on his team. And I think I maybe could have swept. But, uh, you know, oh well. I'm going to go ahead and switch out uh, Thunderous because I don't want to lose him to the Ice Beam. I'm bringing in my uh, Tyranitar, and he does not actually go for the Ice Beam here. Going for the Draco Meteor on Titar. Luckily, the Sand is up, so my special defense is buffed, and it still does a very good amount of damage, but I would have rather Tyranitar did not take any damage at all. <coughs> but oh well. Uh, the special attack was lowered, so now... If he just spams Draco Meteor, he's not going to get anywhere with it. He's going to go ahead and switch, bringing in Toxapex, and I'm going to Dragon Dance on the switch, getting ready to set up. Uh, I normally don't make this mistake. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get one Dragon Dance up. I did not know if an Earthquake from a plus one attack, plus one speed Mega Tyranitar would Oko a Toxapex. So, and I also want to, I also want to be faster than that Latios. And right now I'm not, even after a plus one speed, I know I'm not faster yet. So I'm going to go ahead and go for another Dragon Dance and I get greedy, which I never make this mistake. And also, I forgot all about the move Haze, which Toxapex runs like in every set. And what Haze does, it is uh, it eliminates status changes for those that don't know. So all of my Dragon Dances are just move at that point. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and Dragon Dance again, though, because I get the feeling, you know, he's not going to expect me to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just get a Dragon Dance, and I'm going to go ahead and just go with one Dragon Dance. Because, I mean, I really don't have a choice. He'll just Haze again and set me back. And uh, he's going to go ahead and go for the Scald. Hopefully he doesn't get the burn. And he does not get the burn. Luckily enough. And uh, he keeps getting buffed in the face by the Sandstorm, but his Black Sludge keeps putting him at full health. So for those of you that don't know, Earthquake, after Tyranitar uses one Dragon Dance, will in fact Oko a Toxapex. So good to know for those of you that don't. I did not have to go for that second Dragon Dance. Well, I did. I did, but I didn't. The only reason I went for it was because I wanted to outspeed the Latios. Uh, I just I wanted to be able to take it out and sweep. But oh well. The Draco Meteor, without the Sand, is definitely going to take Mega Tyranitar out of the match. Even with the Sand, actually, I'm pretty sure it would have taken him out. Oh well. Uh, so now, his Latios has its special attack lowered. He's not doing a lot of damage. I know he's probably going to switch. I'm just going to go ahead and bring Landorus back in. Uh, he does not have his Landorus anymore, so I don't got to worry about getting you know residual damage from Rocky Helmet. I'm going to go ahead and just U-turn. He's going to switch, bringing in Mega Metacham, and U-turn Mega Metacham in the face, putting it in the red, and just slowly wearing it down with that pivot tempo. And now I'm going to go ahead and bring in Excadrill, uh, because I, kn I know he can fake out. I just brought in Excadrill to bring it in. You know, I know he's going to go for the fake out. So I'm going to switch out because I don't want to break my sash. And I'm just going to go back into Landorus, lowering that attack with the Intimidate. And I'm just going to keep slowly wearing the Mega Metacham down. And hopefully he didn't see the switch coming. Uh, and uh, luckily enough, he just goes straight for the high jump kick. So I probably I probably could even have kept Excadrill in instead of my entry hazard finally. But, uh, you know, I didn't. I switched. I didn't want to take the fake out. So now I'm going to go ahead and U-turn, taking, uh, taking Mega Metacham out of the match, and finally just getting it out of there. Uh, he probably should have gone with the, well, I don't know. I was going to say, he probably should have gone with the fake out, because my Excadrill is holding a Focus Ash, but maybe he didn't know that at the time. So now I'm going to bring Ex Excadrill in, and just see if I can get something going here. He's going to bring in Tapu Koko, and I'm holding a Focus Sash. I don't see Tapu Koko doing too much to Excadrill that could even make me remotely worried but his Tapu Koko has the move Nature's Madness and is going to do the Z move of uh, Guardian of Alola which again I don't got to worry too much about this because I know I resist it and I'm holding a Focus Ash and I'm at full health so uh, I, I knew this wasn't going to Oko but even if it did I'm not too worried about it and instead of setting on my entry hazards, I'm just going to get some, you know, I'm just going to get the Tapu Koko out of my face and just go for the Earthquake and take it out. Because obviously, you know, it's not holding a Focus Ash, it's holding a Z-Crystal. And Guardian of Alola doing a good amount of damage to Excadrill, but not enough that I got to worry about. Earthquake taking Tapu Koko out of the match. And that's all she wrote for Tapu Koko. So now he's only got one Pokemon left. He's got that Latios. I'm hoping I can take this Ice Beam. Because if I can't, I'm going to be in a tough spot. Ice Beam taking my Excadrill out of the match. A choice Scarfed Latios. I got a problem here. My Thunderous is weak to Ice. My Landorus is weak to Ice. I got a very big problem. And my, my last two Pokemon are freaking weak to this Ice Beam. Ice Beam is definitely going to take Landorus out of the match. So, yeah, this is not looking good. I really wanted to find a way to deal with this Latios in, early in the game because of this. I did not want this to happen. Ice Beam on Thunderous. 
definitely not taking it out of the match. Thunderous lives with 15 health to Hidden Power Ice. The Latio is right in the face, taking it out of the match and netting me the win. Oh my gosh, I was sweating right there. <laughs> that was an awesome rematch, Robbie. That was an awesome rematch, man. That match was a lot of fun. So, moving on to my next battle against uh, this guy's in my Discord server, and in my Discord he goes he goes by the name Marshadow, but he's got a lot of different game profiles with a lot of different teams. So this particular team is looking very intimidating. I'm not a fan of Magirna. I'm not a fan of Tapu Lele. As I've said, I can't stand Tapu Lele. It's the most broken of the Tapus, at least in my opinion. Uh, but I don't see anything that's particularly threatening my Excadrill, so I'm going to go ahead and put Excadrill out there. And he's going to start off with Magirna, which already puts me in a good spot. I don't see Magirna doing too much to an Excadrill. Uh, I could, if I could, I could friggin' Earthquake, but instead I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and get my entry hazards out there. Because, I, I mean, if he didn't switch, I, I really don't know what he would have used to, to even remotely hurt Excadrill. I'm going to go ahead and set Stealth Rocks up, getting my entry hazards up, and he's going to switch into his Heatran that is not holding an air balloon. So I'm going to go ahead and just Earthquake this thing because I didn't see anything on this team that can uh, that's immune to ground types. Earthquake times four weakness on the Heatran, definitely knocking it out of the match. So there goes Heatran. There is a Pokemon I do got to worry about, though. I'm not a fan of Kartana at all. And uh, this is pretty much one Pokemon I'm worried about because I don't like Kartana. It's an Ultra Beast. It has the ability Beast Boost, and those are just stupid abilities. Sacred Sword activating my uh, Focus Sash, putting me at one health. And I'm going to go ahead and see what Earthquake does here because Car Kartana's defenses are kind of papery. So let's see what Earthquake does does a good amount of damage but it doesn't put it anywhere near as low as I'd wanted to I kind of was hoping it would take it out but I'm gonna go ahead and switch because I got a feeling he's gonna just stick with the secret sword bringing in Mimikyu and luckily enough my prediction panned out sacred sword not affecting Mimikyu due to its ghost typing and the reason I used Mimikyu is because Mimikyu was kind of just sitting in my box collecting dust and I haven't used it since I met the made those videos about it I went ahead and went I went ahead and went for the shadow sneak but he's going to defog, which uh, kind of upset me a little bit because I could have gone with the Swords Dance and just swept, which I should have gone with the Swords Dance anyway because my Disguise is still up. He hasn't broken it yet. Shadow Sneak taking Kartana out of the match. Now he's going to go ahead and come with Blissey because Shadow Claw, Blissey resists. Shadow Sneak, Blissey resists. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and switch out because I don't want to get hit with Toxic or Thunder Wave. And that's probably what was coming because, I, you know, I just, that's just, you know, basic bullsey behavior. So I went back into Excadrill and he went for the Toxic. My Steel Typing uh, nullifying the Toxic. And I'm going to go ahead and get my Entry Hazards up again after he defogged. So that's a good break for me. Flamethrower taking my Excadrill out of the match. And hey, Excadrill did what it was supposed to do. It's a suicide lead. It's meant to get Entry Hazards out and then go by. <laughs> that's what it's meant to do. So here's some of the combo footage that I got. It was the best that I can get out of it. Uh, I had a feeling I could set up on Blissey, and I'm going to go ahead and bring combo out. He switches, and I'm going to go ahead and get Substitute going, and just starting the, starting the, uh, you know, the setup of combo. And here's where I got problems. So Substitute, and then Belly Drum. And what you want is you want to Substitute and then Belly Drum, getting the max attack and then you want Kamo to eat the Salak Berry. The problem that I'm having is my Kamo is not doing that. And I have no clue what's going on with that. So as I said guys, if you have this set on your Kamo and you've got it down to where it works every time, please let me know what your setup is because I'm, I'm needing help with it. Because I mean, I've, I'm not getting it down. And anyways, Victini going to use the Z Celebrate which boosts all of its stats, I think like one stage or maybe two. And then Stored Power on Kamo, dealing a very good amount of damage because Stored Power does more damage the more stats that, the more stats that are raised, I think. And Thunder Punch after a max attack is not going to take Victini out because of that Z Celebrate. So had I had that Salic Berry, it might have done it depending on how many uh, how many levels Z Celebrate Z Celebrate raises stats. I think it's one, but I could be wrong. I'm going to go ahead and bring uh, Mimikyu back in because I can just uh, Shadow Sneak this thing. It's Psychic Typing. It's at uh, such low health. 
that Shadow Snake will just take it out of the match here. So I'm going to bring Mimikyu back in and just get rid of it. Get rid of the Victini. And Shadow Snake taking Victini out of the match. Uh, I still got my disguise up. Um, I feel like I'm in a pretty good position here. I'm going to go ahead and get my sword, uh, my sword Dance up. My Girna coming in on Mimikyu. And uh, I don't like Magirna, so I definitely want to take this Pokemon out. I'm going to go ahead and get my Swords Dance going, raising my attack two stages, and he's going to just hit power to break my disguise. Uh, I'm not sure what Magirna has on it, if anything, that can take out Mimikyu. I'm pretty sure actually it has a lot because Mimikyu's defenses aren't the best to begin with. So he probably just gone, could have gone with like a Fleur Cannon or a Flash Cannon or something because Magirna is a Steel type, so Flash Cannon probably would have done the job actually. And I got the Swords Dance up, and I forgot he had Blissey. I completely forgot, and I went with my Z-Move, which, yeah, that's not going to do anything to Blissey, because normal-type Pokemon are immune to Ghost-type attacks. So this was very embarrassing for me, because I forgot Blissey was even there, and I just wasted my Z-Move and got nothing out of it because of Blissey's normal typing. So that was actually a good move on his part. But a very, very bad move on mine. And I mean, that's that's on me. I should have known better than that. I should have remembered Blissey was still up. I'm going to go ahead and play rough, doing a good amount of damage to Magirna, but not putting it anywhere near low enough that he's got to be worried. So now i got to stick with Shadow Claw. And luckily enough, Shadow Claw hits very hard after a Swords Dance, and it takes Magirna out of the match. Which is good, because I cannot freaking stand Magirna. That Pokemon is just so freaking good. And then another Pokemon that is stupid good is Tapu Lele. God, this Pokemon is just stupid. That Psychic Surge is just so freaking broken. Uh, I, I can't stand Tapu Lele. It is way too good of a Pokemon to be in the OU meta. At least that's that's just what I think. This is just my opinion. I just feel like that about Tapu Lele. Psychic. Oh, calling Mimikyu and taking it out of the match. I'm going to go ahead and bring in my Tapu Koko. This is a different Tapu Koko. This is my dual screens Tapu Koko. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in the, bring him in, getting rid of the psychic terrain. And I'm going to see if I can just get set up here because he's got a, he's got Pokemon left that I got a feeling Halucha can just kind of, you know, walk his way around. So I'm going to get my electric terrain up and I'm going to go ahead and U-turn to bring in Halucha and see if I can set up here and just start sweeping this team. And, uh, you turn on a, and one thing about Tapu Koko, if you didn't know, his attack stat is actually higher than his special attack stat. That's a very interesting fact that I think a lot of people don't know. So if you didn't know, there you go. Tapu Koko is actually, he actually has a higher attack than special attack. Anyways, uh, bringing in Halucha, uh, using the electric seed, activating Unbur Unburden, doubling his speed, making him faster than pretty much everything in the freaking OU meta. And he's going to bring in Tapu Lele. Uh, I should have gone for the Swords Dance, but I wasn't sure... If he would have gone with an attack or a status inducer, which even then, had he gone for Toxic with only like what two or three Pokemon left, he wouldn't have been able to stall long enough to just Toxic down my Halucha. So I should have gone for the Swords Dance, but instead I went for the High Jump Kick. Luckily, it did not miss, and Poison Jab taking Tapu Lele out of the match. So that's awesome. That is one freaking thing I love about Halucha is it learns that move Poison Jab to just freaking punch those stupid Island Guardians in the face. <laughs> Blissey coming in and all he has left is Blissey high jump kick is definitely going to knock Blissey out of the match so good game Marshadow good game Ravi uh, thanks for watching guys I hope you all enjoy I hope you all enjoyed the breakdown I'm sorry I didn't have better footage of combo be sure to comment rate and subscribe join my discord and I will check you all later good night everyone